Hello there! Welcome back. This is lesson three in our atom unit, and today's topic is average atomic mass. So in the last video, we talked about atomic history, and we talked about, you know, how we first started looking at what the atom was in about 300 BC with the Greek dude named Democritus, all the way to just about 100 years ago, to where we are now. Today, we're covering atomic, average atomic mass, and that explains where the number on the periodic table came from. Okay, so, average atomic mass. Most elements have one or more naturally occurring isotopes. And if you recall from the other day, isotopes are, it's the same element, so they have the same atomic number, so the same number of protons, but it's a different mass, meaning the number of protons and neutrons is different. So remember, mass is protons and neutrons. So an isotope is a different version of an element with a different mass because the number of neutrons has changed. So remember the other day, I had showed you a picture of Joey from Friends. This is Joey. And if he were to, you know, get on a scale, he'd weigh whatever he weighed. But then, if Joey decides to wear every single piece of clothing that exists. So this box represents his clothing. And he gets on a scale. He's still Joey. But he has a different mass. So that's what an isotope is. The same element, but a different mass. And how do you get a different mass, but keep the same element? You have to change the number of neutrons. So same element, different number of neutrons, so the mass is different. Okay. But not all these masses are the same. So yes, they all occur in nature, but they don't all exist in the same percentages. So if I was to send you out on a mission and said, okay, go outside, go bring me back magnesium atoms. About 79% of the atoms that you guys would bring back would have a mass of about 24 AMU. And then about 10% of the atoms that you brought back would have a mass of 25 AMU. And about 11% would have an AMU mass of 26. So yes, you, have, you could have a mass of 24, 25, or 26, but they exist at different percentages. And it's kind of like calculating a grade. Just because you get 100 on a homework assignment, that 100 on a homework assignment doesn't count as much as 100 on a test. So that's where these weighted averages come from. Okay, so where does that number on the periodic table actually come from? Well, the easy answer is math. You have to do some math to get that. But because each isotope exists in different proportions, we can't just average them together normally. Add them all up, divide by that many. We have to kind of take into account of these percentages that they exist in. So let's kind of look at our magnesium example. Okay, so with our magnesium example, there are two methods you can do this. Method one says multiply the natural abundance uh, on Earth by the atomic mass of each element, add the values together, divide by 100. So let's take a closer look into what this means. Okay, so multiply the natural abundance, that's this, by the atomic mass. Okay, so you have 78.99 times 23.9850. So that's uh, magnesium 24. The next one, we're going to add that to the 10%, so 10.00 times 24. 0.9858, and we're going to add that to the last one, so the 11%, 11.01, times 25.9826, and we're going to do all of that, all of that, divided by 100. So basically it's percent one, mass one, plus percent 
2 times mass 2 plus percent 3 plus mass 3 as many times as you need. So if you were to, if you were to put this into a calculator, parentheses are your best friends. So the entire top thing in parentheses divided by 100, you get 24.305. AMU. And if you were to look at the periodic table for magnesium, it would say 23.305, exactly what you got. Okay. Method two is a little bit different, but the same general idea. So instead of dividing by 100, they want you to convert the percent to a decimal right off the bat. So in order to convert the decimal to the percent to a decimal, all you have to do is take this decimal point and move it over two spots. That's what gives you your decimal. So if you look at this example, let's work on the 24 one first. So multiply the mass of the atomic mass by the decimal version of the natural abundance. Okay, so the decimal version of the natural abundance would be 0.7899 times... Keep the mass as is, 23.9850, plus, do the next one. Again, we took our 10%, converted it to a decimal point by moving that spot over two times. So you get 0 0.1000 times, keep the mass the same, 24.9858. We're going to add that to the last piece. Again, the percent as a decimal is 0 0.1101 times the mass, which is 25.9826. Now, because you've done this and you converted the percentage to decimals, you do not need to multiply by 100. This is all you need to do. When you plug all of this into a calculator, you get 24.305 AMU. Again, that is what the periodic table says. That's what you got, and that's it. So which method do I have to use? Honestly, it's, it's up to you. The Regents loves asking these types of questions, and generally they like to ask it with the method two, method two version. But as long as you can recognize both and you're comfortable doing one of them, that's all that matters. I personally like converting the decimals to the percentages to decimals. That's just me. So if you look at this example, this is a region's question. It says, which numerical setup can be used to calculate the atomic mass of the element bromine? So we have the atomic mass and we have the natural abundance. So nothing is divided by 100. So it looks like they took these and converted them to decimals. So you get 0.5069, and you get 0.4931. So which one of these answer choices would be the best way to show the numerical setup for the atomic mass? And if you chose C, this would be correct, because you're taking this mass times the percentage as a decimal, and adding that to this mass times that as a decimal. So your answer would be C. Okay, let's try one more together. Uh, example number one, silicon has three naturally occurring isotopes. Use the info provided to calculate the average atomic mass for silicon. Again, I like to use the decimal method, so I'm going to do that. So let's look at this one first. We have 92% and the mass of 27.9. So if we convert that percent to a decimal, we get 0 0.9223 times that mass. And again, you always keep that mass as is. You do not change that. Like that. Okay. We're going to add that to 0 0.0467. So that's this converted to a decimal. Again, move your decimal spot over two spots times the mass, 28. 0.976, and we're going to add that to our last one, 
Again, turn this to a decimal, you get 0 0.0310 times 29.973. Again, because you converted to a decimal, you do not have to multiply, I mean divide by 100. So you get your answer to be 28.0846 AM. And that's it. Okay, try this one. Example two, chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes. Use the information provided, calculate the average atomic mass for, uh, for chlorine. Okay, so what you should have done, let's look at this one first. Convert this to a decimal, so you get 0 0.7577 times the mass, 34 0.968, and I'm going to add that to this, so you get this has a decimal of 0 0.2423 times 36.965. There is your setup, no need to divide by 100, you're good. Plug it into a calculator and you get 35.452. And there's your answer. Number three. An element recently discovered in Forest Hills High School is called Forest Diem. Occurs in the following proportions 81% FO50500 and 18.25% FO502. Now, this represents the mass, and this represents the mass. So, 81.75% of the time, you have a mass of 500, and then the other 18.25%, you have a mass of 502. Let me put this over here. Okay, so we're going to do, work on this the same way. This one says, you know, I'm going to here is one set in blue. So convert that to a decimal. You get 0.81.75 times the mass of 500. Plus, you need this section. Again, convert that to a decimal, 8.1825 times 502. Now you're left with what you're familiar with. Plug it into a calculator, and you get 500.365 AMU. And that's it. Okay. Try this example. A new element, schoolium, found only in schools, occurs in the following proportions. 9.75% 750 and 90.25% 752. Okay, so let's use this one as the red color. Turn this into a decimal, you get 0 0.09750 times the mass of 750. And then we have the blue section. So we're going to add that to the decimal, 0 0.925 times 752. Again, you're left with what you're familiar with. Plug this into a calculator, and you get 751.805 AM. Now, if we think about this, does this make sense? With this made-up example, we can't exactly check it on the periodic table. But it's saying 90 percent of them, 90% of the atoms have a mass of 752, and only about 10% have a mass of 750. So doesn't it make sense that we're closer to 752 than we are to 750? So even if you're just thinking about the numbers a little bit, that can kind of give you a ballpark as to whether or not you're in the right area. You're going to continue with this more, so if you're still a little bit confused, it's totally okay. We are going to practice this um, more. So, on the next episode, you're going to talk about electron configurations, how electrons get excited, and how glow sticks glow. Bye!